All right, we're back. Um, so, only thing I was just about to play is remembering that everyone is a first up in it. It's just a game. So if we get so, super salty over Diplo and con coalitions, I'll do super cringe roleplay for all my Diplo. And that tends to make people less happy, I found. Plus, it's fun to roleplay. Yeah, the roleplay aspect seems pretty fun. Um, in, uh, the, in, like, board gaming, there's a, there's a term called the magic circle, where, um, when you're in the magic circle, everything, like, anything goes. But you all used to remember that you're in the magic circle. And you're only lying or doing something because you're in the magic circle. And once you start, like, getting salty like that, you gotta take a step back and, uh, remember that it's just a game. I mean, I don't blame anybody for really getting mad in the moment over Diplo. Or diplomacy or, like, deals and stuff. It, it is just a game. It's a game that you put a lot of time into. But, um... At the end of the day, it is a game. And, um... As long as the person can step back and get over it. Like, don't get me wrong. It's okay to, like, remember things from game to game. And remember who, who follows through their deals and who doesn't at certain times. But you can't, like, get mad about it. Or you have to get over it. You can be mad at the moment, but you have to get over it. Otherwise, you probably shouldn't be playing these kind of games. Because I understand getting a little salty. I mean, this is a game you put in... You put into, like... You put several months into at a time when you're playing multiplayer asynchronously. So why wouldn't you get salty? I would... I'd be a little concerned if you didn't get salty about something you put months of your time into. But, uh... You know, you gotta be able to compartmentalize at some point and be like, okay, it happened, gotta get over it. But don't expect me to make a deal with you in the sober situation later on. But that's part of the metagame, too. You know? Yeah, it's a game of world domination. And, um, especially in a game like, uh... Like D Dominions, when you have a, um smaller community and you know like all the people you're playing with part of the game is knowing who you're playing with right when um if you go to like a casino regularly or something and play with people or like some like gambling group you don't just play the game you play the people so it's always like you forgive but never forget Let's uh, build up some archers there. Yeah. Um, I would be like if I said I didn't have a list of known nap breakers. <laughs> I mean, that's completely fair. Uh, I mean, in real life, you know, you always remember the people who do you dirty. You don't have to hate them. You just have to remember not to load them the five bucks again. Uh, but, um, what was I going to say? Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Oh, in Root. Uh, in the, in the board game Root, right? I was, um, talking to some people, and we were talking about, like, over the, ta um, table talk and over the table strategy and stuff, and I was like, listen... Uh, generally, you want to, like, keep your word and talk, like, because people are going to remember that, and, you know, you want to tell the truth and generally explain what you're going to do until that the point where you can lie, break away, and run with it and get to the victory point. Because, um, when you, when you make a deal and go back on it early game where there's not that much to gain from it, people remember that, right? But if you make, break a deal to win the game, people are still going to remember it, but they're going to be much more understanding than breaking a deal early on. Yeah. 
but like if you break your nap to take um you know the like your halfway point to your halfway thrown point then um like if you're playing to 10 thrones and you take a throne to get to seven points breaking that nap is probably going to be more impactful to that person than you breaking your nap to get to your um 10 point throne or 10th point throne right because at that point everybody can understand you um or anybody can understand you stabbing somebody in the back to win but people are much more salty when you stab them in the back to get a little bit ahead uh in the ti4 community um it's like it's called they call it boat floating because the the general meta i would say in um a lot of the ti4 communities i hang out in is that you want to um you want everybody to get to nine or you want everybody to get to however many points you're playing two minus one and you want to get the last point right because um every time you go up and go break a deal or you know you don't share the love that's somebody who you're pissing off that's probably going to win slay you if you piss them off too early not that you can never piss them off and never break that deal but you have to be strategic about it and people and you know people always remember the bad shit that happens too uh we do need to give priests to this guy before he moves out so let's do that this guy needs a priest too but some people do do nap break for thones but i've never done it for any of my wins personally i was in the traditional nap and messages message and wait for the required turns to fight for the win i mean I mean, that's fair and i'm sure like that has an advantage right like like admiral was saying every nap na the cost of breaking a nap is reputation so 99 like people who play with you are going to remember like hey um this guy's going to uh what was i going to say this guy's going to keep his deals when i play with him so i know he's a trustworthy actor um even even at the end of the game when uh I know he can win by break by secretly breaking the snap and stabbing me in the back. But that's also why um That's also why I like uh non-binding diplomacy, right? Like there's a lot of games where you you take a dip you make a deal or you do some diplomatic action and it's binding and you have to work through it. But um the only like time I really like like binding deals is when there's immediate transactions, like uh if you're trading some resources, like I give you, um, like in Catan, I give you wood for sheep, and that's an automatic deal. But if there's something that extends past that, like that trade, that I feel like should be non-binding. Yeah, and that's that's a 100% valid way to play. And honestly, I think it does that that way of playing does you a lot of good because, like we we're talking about, you do maintain your reputation. And that has a um, huge value all on its own. On its own. All right, uh, they're holding on for their priests. I don't remember recruiting this guy. Yeah, I think that's like, there's just so much, so many interesting things that could happen when diplomacy isn't binding. And turns are like asynchronous or synchronous, I mean, like when everything happens at once. Not that I think diplomacy would be bad if like everybody took their turn sequentially, but I think it really like at, like diplomacy is one of the games that really benefit from everybody taking their turn at the same time. Oh, 
There's an Indy. Precision 10. These guys are so much better than our uh, crossbowmen. Precision 10. Precision 11, but they have short bows. They might as well be spitballing at people. Hand reveal of a new turn is fantastic. All the cards on the table, you spent all your gem bank magic, phasing, and all your mages. I just sent to scout into battle to see what you were willing to commit. Yeah, it's just the mind games. The the emergent narrative of this game is fantastic, and those 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 are the stories that really do make that do separate good games from great and fun games are those moments like it feels bad at the moment but being the guy who blew all of his um his trip his big army on fighting a scout and showing his hand he's gonna remember that and that's gonna be a story he's going to tell I mean and not that, like, I'm not dissing on any other, like, genres of games or anything like that. But there's just not a lot of, a lot of get, types of games that can offer that kind of moment. And at such a regularity that, you know, a game like Dominions does. Do we control? We just don't need to build the temple here. Um, this guy. He has Sight Search and is finished there. So, let's go back this way because he still needs to go this way. Why are you going that way? I understand that this might be faster or take less movement points. Or actually, he can't even get over there unless this is frozen. Okay, but they'll move anyways. Worst feeling in the moment for me is forgetting to put the necessary gems on my important mage to cast one important spell to fortify battle. Oh man. That kind of thing just breaks breaks your heart every time. Um in my uh Uruk game. Speaking of uh forgetting to do things. At, uh, at the, like, game-winning siege, we broke the fort down. I clicked my dudes to click, uh, break siege. And I end turn because nothing really matters besides that siege and claiming the throne the next turn after that. And what I ended up doing was selecting only my god to fight the siege that loads in with just my god. And he sits there, casts one or two spells... Gets hit by an arrow and teleports away because I left Ring of Returning on him. Devastated. I was devastated. And then, um, Abyssia rolls in and crushes my army on the fort before I can take it. And kills my prophet who was also there. Like, talk about taking the wind out of my sails. Just devastated all right so nothing too crazy happened that turn i'm pretty sure i told you to auger Did. Oh, no, he's, um, monthly ritual, 
out here. Okay. Hopefully he remembers to that. You know what? I think what happened was he got, had one of his, like, uncontrollable turns and that overwrites um, his ability to actually continue the next turn with the uh, repeat action. What's this guy doing? He is building. Um, let's continue to build the Citadel. Let's have it go there for now. Help with the fight. Okay, and now we've pretty much circled back, so we'd have to go in and attack, uh, man or feminine or, or get out of here, or old to get out of here. Which, you know, expansion phase is almost over, except for, like, over here. We should build some scouts. Because I need to figure out... I want to see what's going on over here before I make any more decisions. And my other scouts seem to have died off. Alright, so we got to collect those guys. Let's take out these oats. Make sure we are all ordered up. Actually, keeping all of our guys like this is probably better. Because, um... Uh... They'll just fly on us, and we won't really have to go anywhere. I wish, like, certain spells like Bless had a hotkey all on their own. There's just certain spells that you can just spam, right? Uh, this guy, actually, I want to come down here and join this army so he can spam Bless too. Pretty good controlling the caves. Maybe I'll build a fort up here. You know, yeah. I I discovered that uh did the Nazca game and I was ranting and raving about how awesome it was. I feel like um in Blitz games, a lot of the like the skill in that game comes down to who knows the best, uh, or who has a better understanding of the hotkeys than the other opponents. Because I'm sure just the hotkeys save you so much time. 